Welcome to the Rehabilitation Studies Speaker Series. The event will begin shortly. All right, so do we want to turn it over to um, Larry and Tracy and Pascal and Harvey and see um, if you guys could give us an audio description of yourselves? So, uh, I'm here in Burlington, Vermont. It's Pascal Chang. I'm here with Larry Bissonette. I'm a Asian American with dark brown hair and I'm wearing glasses and, and also have a mask on. And I have a dark gray shirt and uh, we're in a room just with nothing on the walls except yellow, colored yellow. And then Larry, had, Larry types to communicate and he had just typed, I am a white bald man. Um, and Larry is wearing a black mask and you're wearing a light blue shirt. And uh, and we're sitting close to each other so he can type on it. He has that an iPad that he'll be typing on. And I'm Harvey Lavoie. I'm in Barry, Vermont, with Tracy Thresher. Um, I'm a white male with gray hair, glasses, wearing a surgical mask, uh, and a red shirt. And we're working in one of our uh, sensory workspaces. Um, and so in the background, we have paintings and pictures and such uh, that represent the work that we do here. Um, for the sake of time, Tracy Thresher is a white male. He's wearing a black uh, cap. He's wearing a blue mask. He has a brown sweater on. And then he's going to type something to, to greet you guys. So. Perfect. So we Hello. will go ahead and get started with some questions. Hang for on, Paige. Paige. Oh, yeah. Just hang on and let Please. Tracy finish his communication. I'm so sorry. Oh, hey. Tracy. He fell on the chair. Yeah. He broke that. <laughs> Typing. Man. Uh, uh. Here. Two. Time. Up. Hey. Powerful. Storm of Hello, this is Tracy, the typing man here to type up a powerful storm of intelligence. Sounds great, Tracy. Well, we really look forward to speaking with both of you today.
All right, we will go ahead and get started with some questions. Um, the first one that I wanted to ask both, both of you um, was what motivated you to want to film a documentary? And what did you want the public to learn from watching it? Um, okay, so I'll, I'm going to read what Tracy typed uh, to yeah. that. Larry, Sorry. his response to that. Are you going to go first, Pesco? Well, no, he has to, he doesn't have a prepared for this one. Oh, okay. So Tracy typed, yes, I was the spark for the movie idea, and I had a wild time making the movie. Doing Wretches and Jabbers propelled my purpose to one of thinking more globally. I had often wondered how it was for people living with autism in other countries. It is my feeling that I have needed this journey to discover my true purpose in life. And just the backstory real quick on the movie is that we were all in California at a conference in 2008 on a panel and the director, Jerry Wurzberg, was in the audience and the guys were sort of riffing about uh, traveling the country like a rock band um, sharing this idea of presuming competence and at the end they wouldn't smash their devices like rock band do with their guitars. Um, and Jerry really liked this idea and she, she came forward and talked with us and the guys about the possibility of making a, a documentary. And as I say, the rest is history. All right, wonderful. I really enjoyed watching that documentary and I, I think that um, it is inciting so much knowledge um, globally. So I love that. All right. And Larry, then Pascal, Larry. is Larry typing his answer? Oh, he's so far as type. Larry likes to be filmed on. Camera. Larry likes to be filmed on camera. People. People. People, love. people love. Uh, No broke his head. No this is broke his head. He broke his head. He fell into the head. He broke his head. He broke it. Uh -huh. Alternative. People love alternative. Looking. Looking. Movie. Movie. <clears throat> Stars. Larry likes to be filmed on camera. People love alternative looking movie stars. So I'll read that again. Larry likes to be filmed on camera. People love alternative looking movie stars. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes. I know that um, just to speak for myself, I loved the documentary and you two definitely are. You were movie stars in it. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thank you for that one. We do have another question here for the both of you. And it would just be, how did Wretches and Jabbers change your life? Yeah. 
Okay. Pascal, does Larry have something? No, he doesn't. Okay, so Tr Tracy does. Um, so Tracy, I'm gonna read Tracy's answer to that. On my journey with traveling the world to film Wretches and Jabbers, I was able to release old dark cloak of autism. My life is now mine to teach others about overcoming communication barriers. I believe it's important to break down barriers of labeling to move to inclusion. My life has changed dramatically since the release of our film. I now have the beginning of the life I dreamt of. I've traveled the world with Harvey Lavoie, Larry Bissonette, and Pascal Chang as the Fab Four, typing pearls of wisdom to educators, parents, professionals, and students to change, their, to change their views of disability. Perfect. That's a really great point, Harvey. And I'm so, or I'm sorry, Tracy, my goodness. And um, I'm so glad to hear that you're finally starting to live the life that you've dreamt of. And we are just um, waiting to hear from Larry here. So we can give him a moment. Nice to, eat. Oh. nice to eat at Gourmet. <clears throat> I can, I can add that um, the film's been out for 11 years, so we've done a lot of traveling around the country and the world with the film uh, over the last 11 years. So Tracy's got to be able to do quite a bit uh, of the kind of work that he likes to do and feels that's his sense of purpose. Okay, nice to eat at gourmet restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> and fly. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> third. <laughs> and fly third. I got a cut out letter that I didn't register. Class. <laughs> nice to eat at gourmet restaurants and fly third class. So nice to eat at gourmet restaurants and fly third class. Mm -hmm. We never got, very rarely did we fly first class. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Larry, Larry, I'm with you. My favorite part of traveling is the restaurants, too. It's the best part. Definitely. Well, it's so great to hear that um, the documentary has changed your lives, whether it be providing purpose for Tracy or eating at gourmet restaurants for Larry, because as Paige <laughs> said, that would be my favorite part about travel as well, or having a beer in Japan like you did. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Our next question for the both of you is, um, we were curious, what are some common misconceptions that people have regarding autism? Yeah, no. So Larry does have something oh, prepared have for this. this summer. People, no, not today. people are, are people. Sure. Larry is a person first. No, oh, Autism no, is one of my personal no, attributes, no, along with being an actor and artist. No, However, no. lore around autism uses situations of incompetence to predict yes, what little model. potential people have to learn creative and artistic you skills. Stand. Potential of people with autism you to stand. learn professional skills is largely untapped because society lets out lets dictate hey, assessment hey, of hey, job hey. performance. Is that hey. clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay, Tracy typed, wow. quietly ignored, uh -huh. autism as a rule, feels as though society as a whole is not interested in knowing we are intelligent. Even though my friends and I possess intelligent ideas, the people in the educational system, for the most part, have historically not understood 
how to educate us. Teaching kids, parents, and teachers is one of my goals. Wow. Thank you very much for sharing that. Cassidy, we can't hear you. Oh, shoot. I think I might have cutting out a little bit. I just said that those are both really great points regarding autism, okay. and that those are some great goals. Mm -hmm. um, so then my next question is kind of following up on the past one. And we are wondering, the both of you, um, what is something that you wish people knew or understood about autism? So uh, Mary has written about this quite a bit. So I'm going to just read one thing that he's written about this. Um, I want people to look past behavior to find the inner intelligent self. To appreciate more apples in Vermont, you buy cider. So we're a big apple. And cider is a big... Um, Looking at autism more deeply is like distilling intelligence from the outer core of behavior. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tracy typed, I want others to know that not being able to talk doesn't mean there's a lack of understanding or that the person doesn't want to share what they're thinking. I think that is such a good point. And I feel like that is something, I mean, that is such a common misconception. And I, I learned so much just from watching the documentary. And that was one of them. I just, I, I personally almost felt guilty afterwards because of my own preconceived biases. And i I really do appreciate everything I learned from the documentary and that being one of them. Yeah, myself as well, Paige. I know that when I watched it, um, kind of like you said, I think that we have ingrained in our heads this idea that, you know, maybe those with autism fit a certain standard and it's just not true. You know, like you said, it's the understanding and, you know, like uh, I believe it was Larry said, you know, Larry's just a person. He's a person first. And those are some really great um, things to take away from today's session too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. The, um, the presentation, it doesn't take away from who you are as a person and your capabilities and um, your strengths. So I, I learned that. I took that away from there. All right. The next question that we have um, oh, I'm sorry. Pascal, was Larry going to add something? No, no, to the next question. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you talk about the role that assistive technology um, and your assistants play in your life? Does Larry have something, Pascal? He's going to type in response. To All right. So Tracy has something that he typed up. I need technology to give me my voice to communicate. It's important that I have more than one option to use. Letter boards, Intel keys, which is this big keyboard right here. Computers with voice output software. Devices that speak. And my latest moving into the future, big time voice, the iPad. The iPad is really the most important tool in my toolbox when it comes to assessing communication and working. It's the typing with the iPad that gives me the freedom to communicate, present to a crowd. And I would add that as far as my role, yeah, the people that I have trained to support Tracy to access this technology is that we just want to make sure that he has it, it's accessible, uh, and he has support he needs to be able to communicate at the level that he's capable of. Yeah, no, that. Yeah, no, that. I really enjoyed getting to watch the four of you on yeah, screen. Yeah. Um, I can't remember which one said it, but it was it was like the Fab Four, as you guys just had such a great bond and a relationship, and it was 
um, I appreciated the comedy that came out. And so it can see, you can see that you guys just work so cohesively together. Towards expression, more expression of my... Yeah, that, yeah. Sting. That's and, a really good point. Um, we had the advantage of working with each other for quite a yeah. while before we did the movie. So we did have a bond and we did have a kind of rhythm uh, from doing lots of presentations and sure. workshops and uh, trainings and, you know, in the state of Vermont and also, you know, in different states in the United States. So we had that advantage. We had that history of working together. Yay. Okay, it's towards my wah, expression wah. of my inner thoughts. Wah, wah. You stick that paper? That crayon? Oh, shoot. You stick that paper? Cram. You I are mad. You are stand. And I need the uh, gun. Uh, I need the. Ah. Uh, uh, keep going. Ah. Uh, and I need the. Hello. iPad. Ah. Uh, uh, and and hey, uh, uh, what you doing? Uh, 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 broke it. And Pascal's. Thoughts that I need the oh. iPad and Pascal's push I'll read that. It's um, actually I'll just show it's uh, towards more expression of my inner thoughts that I need the iPad and Pascal's pushing us. <laughs> if you want to describe it that way, Larry. <laughs> I love that. Um, One of the things too. Uh, yeah. The film came out just before, or, or we were filming it just before the iPad came out. Mm -hmm. So we were using like three or four different things. Tracy and Larry were using four, three or four different things to type on. But probably we won't, you know, we might have only had the iPad and one other thing had we had, had that been available at the time. Right. Yeah. Um, that has got to be so immensely helpful. And I, I think it was Larry that in the documentary had said that um, learning to type and communicate wow. that way allowed him to express the thoughts that have always been in his head and kind of express that outwardly. And I, I can't imagine the, the feeling of power that both Larry and Tracy and other people that are learning to communicate this way must feel once that becomes an option for them. Oh. Absolutely. And I was just going to go off Pascal. Funny that you mentioned that, Pascal, because I know that when I was watching the documentary, I, I guess I kind of forgot that it took place about 10 years ago or so already. But I thought to myself, I wonder if they, you know, communicate via iPad. I wonder if there's an iPad that they could use for that. If that would be, um, you know, a good form of technology for them. And so as you said, it's kind of, um, it was just kind of funny to watch the film. Yeah, yeah see the various different forms of technology. All right. And then, uh, our next question is for you, Tracy. And it is, what is your favorite part um, about working as a mentor for teens and adults? I know that you mentioned, um, and Harvey also mentioned on your behalf, that you've been able to travel the world quite a bit doing this mentoring. And so we were just curious what your favorite part of that is. 
try to find it. Oh, you're just. Oh, yeah. Yep, there we go. Yes. And Trace, you can add to this if you want to, but he does have something pre typed. Um, being able to have the opportunity to mentor has been the most wondrous experience of my life. By teaching others to make their voices heard through self advocacy, I feel like my life has purpose. My, my time mentoring has been a saving grace for me as well. It has reminded me that we are not alone on this journey and that the connection with another offers us hope for brighter days. That's wonderful, Tracy. Thank you for sharing. I, I think that's, you know, it's such an important part to, um, you know, with our teens and adults these days, in any capacity to be a mentor, I'm sure is extremely rewarding. And so um, I can only imagine that the teens and adults you've worked with have been very grateful for your mentorship. <laughs> Yes. It is. So. Helpful. For. Me. To. Connect with others to share my story. And to encourage them to work. Hard and not give. Yes, it is so helpful for me to connect with others to share my story and to encourage them to work hard and not give up. That's great. I think that, you know, one of the most important or the best things about it is, you know, you're helping so many people, but they are also helping you in return by giving you, you know, that feeling of purpose and like you're changing the world, which you are. Um, Paige, did you have something to add on that? I'm sorry if I cut you off. No, that's okay. I was just going to say thank you so much for elaborating on that. All right, and this question is for you, Larry. Um, we were curious, we got to see you work on your art during the documentary, and so we were just curious how that has helped you express yourself. So I'm gonna read some things that Larry has written about this before, and Larry, if there's anything you wanna add. Uh. Painting is intuition expressed through pictures, pushed out like ocean waves from your hands. It's more yeah. like inner impulses. Uh -uh. Pictures are my way of seeing beauty. Words move in my head like uh -huh. billboards to project meaning into that beauty. Art is intuition based uh -huh. while typing involves partnering thought with movement. My art moves creative impulses to a visual place that leads me in an expression of myself, but you need my typing to understand the meaning. Is that clear? Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the way that those are paired together, that there's the art, which is an expression, but also the need for typing to really communicate that. Um, I've 
I truly just appreciate how um, yeah. I mean, it was almost poetic the way that you describe right. how art is helpful um, and how that's allowed you to express yourself. So thank you. Yeah. Well, Larry's just adding something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pain. Here, on the wall, on the wall. Ah, paint on. on. No, on. No, 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 no time, no time, no time, no no time, no time, no time, no no time, no no time, no no time, no time, no it's paint on my fingers that I love. Uh, I noticed that in the documentary that I just, I really liked that that's the way you do it. I mean, it's just, it's very free. You just do whatever you feel. I love it. And I can definitely tell through your that you are a very creative person. I wish I was that creative. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've tried to paint and I wish that I could just let myself go like that, but I, I have to sit there and sketch it out before I even attempt to paint. Um, so I, I admire your ability to just go for it. Yeah, Larry always tells people, don't premeditate your art. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a lesson I need to learn. <laughs> Maybe that's where we're going wrong, Paige, is we need to <laughs> yeah. yep. let our art flow. Yep. Uh, so we do have another question, and this one is for the both of you again. Um, and we are just curious, um, you two are such wonderful advocates for individuals with disabilities um, in general, and specifically autism. So I am wondering, um, how can we as future therapists best advocate for our clients who have autism? Pascal, does Larry have something or is he going to type? Yes, he does. So Larry, I'm going to read yours, and then you'll get a chance to add, okay? You guys, uh, I don't know if it's us or you. Read it. I think they're freezing up a little bit. Yeah. You froze up, Pascal. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes, we can. <laughs> Okay. People all need a purpose in life, and looking for this will take many forms. Give people opportunities to pursue lots of different things, which are linked to possibilities for intellectual, physical, emotional, or creative growth. Unlock talents and interests of the person rather than pursuing a cure for their disability. I can be a poet, poet, painter, athlete, or reality TV addict. But whatever my passion is, that should define me. You don't think enough today. Not gonna not gonna have no All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Larry. Uh, Tracy, did you wanna did you have anything to add? Yes, he does. Uh, he his answer to this is. I think more people need to get in the communication mix to move the world in the right direction. It is awesome to hear your motivation to help change the world's understanding of us from our point of view. I would encourage you to speak up and speak out bravely, challenging misconceptions with the idea that we are thinking intelligent people who have something to offer and deserve a place at the table. I really love that. Um, just from the both of those, one of my big takeaways from just this and the documentary is that I feel like people put individuals with disabilities in a box and 
they place these ideas on individuals with disabilities and kind of tell them like, well, this is what you're capable of. This is where your intelligence level is at. When in reality, who are we to tell anybody that? Um, I, I really appreciate that lesson of like, it's up to the individual to come to us and say, these are my goals, these are my desires. And it's our job to help them get to that. Um, I also, um, I was super excited just kind of going off of what Tracy was just saying. I was super excited after the documentary, like the first thing I did was call my mom and I was telling her, I'm like, this is what I learned from this documentary. Like, isn't this insane? Like, this is totally changing my perception of individuals with autism. Um, and she was super excited to learn about it. So I do want to let you guys know that just one person watching it is already spreading that information. Oof, dang. Larry's adding something. Uh. 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 So, where no, no, school. Two. Okay. You did what? Here. Exactly. One. We. You made. You You won. How? Bill. Pudding. Us. In. The. Mix. Is. So. Important. And not speaking for us, but Listening and taking are that is so cool to hear, and exactly why we made the film putting us in the mix is so important and not speaking for us, but listening and taking our lead. Exactly. Uh, and Harry they added I'll read that. It's, it's total immersion in your passion that support is needed. Did you hear that? I'll read it again. It's it's total it's total immersion in your Larry, I've got to read I've got to read this. Okay. It's, Maybe move away from him, Pascal, a little bit. Yeah. It's total immersion in your passion that support is needed. You get that? Yep. I definitely agree that that support is necessary. I mean, even as Paige was saying, you know, even us who are graduate, you know, psychology students, that there still is such a a bias or, you know, as Paige kind of stated, you know, we, we're working so hard to advocate for those with disabilities. Um, and so it's really great to learn more about specific types of disabilities so that we can better advocate for our clients. So thank you both for sharing on that one. Um, I, 
just to add real quick mm -hmm. is that there are quite a few first person accounts, uh, movies, other documentaries, movies, and books that have been written by individuals on the spectrum. So there's quite quite a bit out there now to kind of get an idea of, of you know what those folks, how they think, how they want people to interact with them. Um, it's a pretty good set of resources now. Um, okay, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Harvey, for sharing that. We will definitely have to check some of those out and um, hopefully our, our uh, program director, Dr. Knopf, could be able to share some of those with us. So thank you for sharing. I did just want to add on, just tack on really quick, um, that I kind of going off of um, Harvey, what you were saying and Cassidy, um, that it's our role as future therapists to advocate for our clients. But I also think it is just as important to go out in the community and this and society and share that information, share that, you know, these, um, these like preconceived ideas are really, they're different. They're not, they're not really what we have all, most of us have thought. Um, and so it's, it's our role to advocate, um, with our clients and then outside of those sessions as well with our family, with our friends, with people that we meet. Um, cause that's, that's really the way that, that people learn they're educated. So sharing those resources, sharing what we know. Absolutely. And it does, uh, I could be wrong, but it maybe looks like Larry is trying to say something. So just to um, put a plug in for Tracy and Larry, a book that they wrote a chapter for along with, uh, I think, eight other individuals on the spectrum. It's Communication Alternatives in Autism, Perspectives on Typing and Spelling Approaches for Non-Speaking. All right, perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Harvey, when you get a moment, would you mind typing that in the chat? Maybe um, sure. when you have a second? Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah. And I'm not sure right now um, if you can chat or if it's just the Q&A. Um, and if you are unable to chat, we can definitely, um, if you wouldn't mind emailing that to us, and then we could include that on our YouTube page as well. Yeah, it looks like I'll have to email it. Perfect, yeah. It's just the Q&A. There's no chat that I can see. No, that's totally fine. That's it's kind of what I figured. So yeah, maybe email would work best. I'm I'm not too tech savvy, so I may not be the best one to ask on that front. <laughs> right. Um, you were were you both on that email string that we had over the last couple of days? Yes. Okay. All right, Pascal and Larry, did um, Larry have anything else to add? Well, Just I... that it's people, not technology, that make the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. I think he was saying that in terms of support. Because people often ask Sorry. Tracy and Larry you about well, they focus on the technology as out. making Way the out. difference. Way out. But it's really the people that it's support you me. to use the technology that make the, the, the biggest difference. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's not the technology that's going to change people's biases. It's, uh, it's other people. Uh, uh, Anything else? Uh, it's kind of like, even for me, I guess, you know, if I would liken it to, if I, you know, am missing someone and I want to text all of them, you know, it's different than being there in person with them and, you know, being able to communicate with them in person um, in whatever means that may be. So that's a really great point that you make, um, Larry and Pascal, just um, to be reminded that, you know, of course, kind of that person first language that, of course, Tracy and Larry are, you know, a person first and um, their means of communication are second. So, all right. Well, it looks like we are about at that time uh, where we are going to wrap up our questions um, and then open it up for the Q&A. So let's see here. We did have a chat 
that just says uh, that Gene Smith, who is a CRC, is present and he is from Athens, Georgia. All right. And then let's see here. It looks like in our Q&A, um, Stephen Larson had said, I am a person with a disability, a rehabilitation counselor with the state of Minnesota, and I teach a course on autism spectrum disorder. The film is transformational and required viewing for students and any rehabilitation professional who works with people on the spectrum. I had a severe speech disfluency problem as a child, and I cannot imagine being unable to communicate. Your endurance, grit, and determination is a true inspiration to me. Many persons lack patience or a genuine interest in persons with disabilities. I'm interested in knowing the title of Pascal and Harvey. Are you known as facilitators? Um, I'll let you guys answer that and then I'll kind of go on to his next question. Maybe I'll just quickly answer that. We're, we are known as facilitators, but actually the broader term is communication partner. So really anybody who uses any form of what we call yeah, augmentative yeah, communication. Um, like, I don't know if you saw yeah, Stephen yeah, Hawking's yeah, film, yeah, The Theory yeah, of Everything. Yeah. But yeah, his, yeah, when, yeah, during the early yeah, stages yeah, of his yeah, disease, yeah. and when he was not able yeah, to yeah. speak any longer, he started using his yeah. eyes to communicate, uh, 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 which his uh, wife uh, would uh, hold uh, up on a board, there would be a board with letters on it. So she was his communication partner because she was helping to support his communication. So really the broader term is, is communication partner and sometimes facilitator. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other but, part. Um, just to add real quickly. Um, also Pascal and I are not tracing Larry's day-to-day -day communication support. Um, we have people that we work with and train to, to do that in that role. And we, you know, in our agencies, we have a, a role of, of working with a number of different individuals and teams and providing training and, and support. And then also we have a role in the state of Vermont as far as statewide resource around communication for transition age youth and adults. Okay, okay sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Short answer to that waiver services is, is yes. I mean, they, they, they uh, um, but they really fund, um, like Larry, you have several different people support you during the day. So it's not just, it's funding your support and those people would support you, you know, just everyday activities and, um, you know, going to your art studio, Larry, communication. So it's not, they don't just fund a facilitator, they fund it for all your support. Okay. All right, thank you guys for answering that. Um, it looks like Stephen also had a question for Larry um, and Harvey, um, maybe. Um, are you received waivered services funding to fund your facilitators and living arrangement? I think you kind of answered that a little bit. Yeah, it's, we're, so we're, we're all in the state of Vermont. It's, it's home, home and health community based waiver services and it's uh, to fund, not specifically a facilitator, it's just to provide funding for a home, place to live and uh, supports to do your work. Mm -hmm. uh, and as part of that, you need access to, Tracy needs or other people need access to their communication aids or devices to communicate. Sure, okay. All right, and then Tracy and Larry, we do have another question from the Q&A. Uh, this one is from Gene Smith. And he asks, what are your plans for the future? Do you have any additional projects in the planning stage? I have enjoyed listening this morning. I have previously worked with people with disabilities, including autism. Why? Future. Plans. 
R two continue two present and once it's safe to travel Get out in the world to teach. Others about communication and Resuming My future plans are to continue to present and once it's safe to travel get out in the world to teach others about communication and resuming competence. Well, I'm gonna I look ahead to painting full time and showing my work. So I, Larry said, I look dead. ahead to painting full time and showing my dead. work. And I think, Larry, you're saying that because over the last year, Larry's hardly been able to go to his studio, you know, during this time. So he hasn't been able to paint much. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're looking forward to being able to do that more. And just uh, as Tracy said, traveling in general, I know that um, it's the past year has been rough on all of us, I would have to say. Um, and so I can't imagine that for you to, you know, Larry, you love to go out and get into that studio. Tracy, you want to go out and, you know, um, advocate or do mentorship in other places. And so, yeah, it's been a really challenging year for all of us, I would have to say, in regard to being stuck at home. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, somebody had asked if the recording of the webinar will be available, and yes, it will. Yeah, I was just going to come on and say that. Um, hi, everyone. Um, the webinar will be available hopefully this afternoon, if not uh, tomorrow, on our YouTube channel. So um, I don't. Uh, know if there's any other questions, but I just wanted to come on quickly and just thank uh, both Larry and Tracy for being here today. Thank you, Pascal and Harvey, for helping us to coordinate um, the, this whole session. session. Um, we were so excited to be able to show the documentary last night, and um, this is actually um, the end of our nine-part speaker series. We've had um, our students facilitating speaker series throughout the entire semester. So we're very thankful um, to end with such a great session. Cassidy and Paige has done such an amazing job. So I don't know if um, either um, any of you have any final comments and then I'd like to give an announcement of what we'll be doing this fall. Sure. Um, Dr. Knopf does that. I just wanted to also thank Hi. 
Mary and Tracy, and it looks like Tracy is writing something, so I will get it here. You. So. Much. Poor. Is. Opportunity is was a great format little. Different than what we do, but it was. Awesome to throw our pebbles of Mindfulness out to all of. I thank you so much for this opportunity. This was a great format, little different than what we do, but it was awesome to throw our pebbles of mindfulness out to all of you. Opening the door to awareness, you gave us. Thank you. Oh, Larry, I'll read that. Oh. Opening the door oh. to awareness, you gave us. Thank you. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you um, to um, Larry and Tracy for being here. Thank you so much, Pascal and Harvey, um, for also being here today. I just um, I want to let you know and thank you so much for. Um, what you've taught me throughout this and what I've been able to walk away from this. Um, and I, I want you guys to know that it's not something that will walk away from this and goes in one ear out the other, but this is something that um, I intend on carrying on um, into my personal life and my professional life as well. So I thank you for that. So thank you all. I just, uh, before we wrap up, um, I just want to let everyone know that we'll be doing the ability event again this fall. And it will be on Tuesday evenings at seven o'clock. So our partners from other countries can also participate. And so uh, we'll be sharing that information with uh, uh, Larry and Tracy as well. If you'd like to attend, we'll be focusing on the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. And so we hope to have some international speakers this fall and ending with um, a celebration uh, a symposium in Dubai uh, for the International Day of Disability on December 3rd. So very excited um, uh, to have these things coming this fall. Our students will be second year students. And so I think it'd be um, amazing for them to continue to uh, develop their, their skills. So um, Pascal, did you have a comment? Well, we have fond memories of the oh, airport in yes. Dubai. We oh. have seven or eight hour layover there on our way to 
either on our way back or on our, our way to Sri Lanka. So it was on our way. Yeah. We had a McRae. We're pulling together a pretty um, a pretty big uh, task force uh, planning committee. So if uh, if you're if you are interested in participating with us for planning this, uh, it's going to be a week long symposium symposium um, at the World Expo that ends um, um, on International Day of Disability uh, in Dubai. So if it's something you're interested in, let me know and I can um, add you all to our task working group. Could you uh, could you send us information about that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send you information about that, it. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Your CEUs will be processed uh, by next week. Um, so um, thank you for participating. And thank you, Cassie and Paige and interpreters. You did an amazing job. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching the Rehabilitation Studies Speaker Series. 